You're listening to the appetizer size version of this Talkin' Nerdy episode with Chris and Frank. To get access to the unedited meal size version, go to patreon.com forward slash nerdpreneur and become a member of the awesome, awesome nerdpreneur, nerdpreneur board. Now enjoy the episode. We were, yeah, JJ Art Creation, and we probably shouldn't yep. have spent 10 minutes talking about something else, because this was a dense episode. Wow. Really uh, I gotta say, like, there was so many things as I was listening to it over again, and throughout the editing, then I'm like, holy crap, there's so many good insights, and yeah. I think JJ was such a great guest, so... Um, I could go right in. I have tons of stuff, but I've been talking for a while. I want to know, what just, was your impression? Yeah, I want to echo pretty much what you said. I mean, we could have just stopped halfway into the episode and been like, okay, there is enough here to talk about for another hour. But instead, I, I agree. I mean, I think that her background and her skills and her experiences have given her such excellent insight. There's so many things that she said that as I was writing down notes, I was like, wow, this is a quote. This is a quote. This is inspirational. Someone's got to hear this. And we'll get into that as we go. But yes, yeah. go ahead. If you have something you want to start us off with. Well, I was just going to say that uh, it made me come up with business ideas for us marketing the podcast. And one of the things I think we should have is a Nerdpreneur quotes page where we Ooh. just start that. We start posting cool quotes from our episodes and make people who aren't super famous, super famous. Um, by making this. their quotes. So I think that's going to start very soon for us. And we need a good design for each quote. And we'll just Love start it. tagging people as we do it. And that'll help drive the traffic. Anyway, uh, sweet business yeah, idea. We've been, we've been needing some content ideas for our Twitter and Instagram. And that's perfect. Yeah, absolutely. So Nerdpreneur Quotes is coming. Um, there are so many things, though, out of this episode. I mean, I, I one of the things that came out of it for me was, you know, she... You can't become a master of creation without mastering what already is. Like, yes. that was cool. Oh, I wrote that down, too. It's so good. You know, you've got it. Well, the whole idea of being an artist, I just think that was a really like here's in the episode structure that we had. This is where I felt we veered the like like off a lot because there was so many great tangents in her story you know we right. have an episode structure in our first episode that's very much stuck to because we just kind of go through the simple questions and this time i think we had a little more fun with it we went deeper we added more question to the question and one of the things that we dug in on was just how was it that she became a very skilled artist and i think that as a fundamental, if you're looking to get into the art industry, you have to at least have skill and not necessarily talent, skill, which is refined and created. Yeah. That's why she says, you know, you have to master, uh, to become a master of creation, you have to master what already is, which is the skill and form element of becoming an artist. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, it didn't hit me when we had the interview, but listening back, it really did. And, 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 you know what I, cause I always think, Oh, when I hear these things that really touch me, I'm like, man, why does that touch me so deeply? Where does that align with me? And for me, it's, it's, I'm not, I'm not a digital artist, a visual artist. I am a writer and, uh, and a performer. And so for me, and I'm sure plenty of other people that might be in tabletop role-playing games or just writing in general, those stories, it's really important to understand what already exists, what's already natural. So history, for example, is an excellent place to learn for telling stories and going back to the basis. Like the best stories, I believe, are the ones from our history books. I mean, they're not mm -hmm. always told the best in our history books, but those are some very good stories. And and there will, you know, there's some controversial characters that I love because of their stories, not because of what they did, but because mm -hmm. of just their stories. Well, I think I think you're kind of like pulling you're pulling from our other episode we just did too, the monkey DM one, because that was so good, um, which mm -hmm. just highlighting one that's coming. I can't I can't talk about it because we yeah, haven't yeah, 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 looked yeah. at it. But <laughs> God damn, that, that was such a good episode. Um, yeah. No, the the thing about the master of creation and like coming up with, you know, how do you get I guess what I want to talk about is the ten thousand hour rule. That's really what that is, you know. Like you're you're going to spend ten thousand hours on something, and some of us are going to spend ten thousand hours on Netflix, and some <laughs> of us are going to spend ten thousand hours on on Minecraft or a video game. Yeah. And I and I guess some people, uh, like JJ, put ten thousand hours into 
form and art, which is one mm-hmm. of the reasons why that is now what her profession can be. Yeah. And if you are somebody who's willing to put in that time and effort, what are you going to spend the next 10,000 hours or your next 10,000 hours doing? You know, I, I just want to say for me, when I looked at this became a realization as I got older, but I realized that I spent a good 10,000 hours of my life learning how to sell, learning how to influence or how to manage, be a leader in this kind of sales business. I spent a lot mm-hmm. of time in one area. And then I thought to myself after 10 years of really doing it, 13 actually, I was like, that's a great skill. I'm happy with it. But what do I want for the next 10,000 hours? Which mm-hmm. is really in some ways like a decade. What are you going to spend the next 10,000 hours doing? Yeah. And I really did focus on like, okay, I want to do something completely different than being in sales or business. I want it to be something completely different. And that was where I got into music and art and, um, right. you know, all of that, uh, all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, it, it, the sooner one recognizes their passion, they get such a leg up. I mean, when you're a kid and you're in school and you have those, that time for the extracurricular activities, you know, there is it, it really blows my mind when I think about all of the time that we that is taken up with being an adult that we didn't have to bother with as a kid. And so for JJ, she recognized her passion, that story she said when she was four years old, you know, her mom, that's you know, her mom says that as a story of how she first recognized her passion. And I I don't remember what JJ said was the first time she started practicing her craft. Uh, oh, and on that note, the thing that she said about the university, uh, I thought she, that was actually her high school, which is why I said the 10 plus years. I thought that was a high school program. Mm-hmm. Just I got to clear my name real quick. I, I don't I don't roast people on the show regularly. I just do on the first two episodes, it seems. But, well, you kind of knew about those people personally, yeah, too. Yeah. The context is when we're like, let's start this. Frank's like, I know two people right off the bat that we yeah. should start with. And I'm like, they're good friends of mine. And so, yeah. this I is, don't mind roasting them as much. Exactly. You get to see the yeah. the, the friendlier side of, of Frank. Yeah. But the, <laughs> yeah. So the point of that she recognized really early on, she she had that she had that context in the beginning so she could hone that craft. And and for like what you were saying. You know, it's it wasn't until later that you really started to recognize that and you realized in hindsight, wow, I've got all these years of sales. Now, what am I going to do? And I think a lot of people, they they'll be all over, you know, wherever they are in their in the spectrum of life. And they realize, hey, what am I going to put my 10,000 hours in? They may not call it the 10,000 hours, but the passion, where are they going to put their passion? And that is a huge I mean, that's a whole podcast in itself. Yeah, something that will continue to come up, I'm sure, as we go. Yes. There's so many more things I want to get to in this episode, but I, I'm yeah. really, I, I really uh, agree that you know, you people got to be finding their passion, and if you haven't, just keep trying stuff. Yeah, and even constantly if you feel, search for it. And you're not, and it's not too late either. I hate when people who are like 30 or 40 or 50 are telling mm-hmm. me like, oh, it's too late to do blah. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not like yeah. you can still live for another decade beyond what you think like we're gonna live a lot longer nowadays so you actually need stuff to fill the time i'm like thinking to myself like what am i saving for my 40s like what am i saving for my (laughs) 50s because honestly there's a lot of things i'm getting to do right now which is awesome but i'm like i'm running i'm not running out but like what do i actually want to do later and save Mm -hmm. for some of that stuff to take up time because goddamn, life is long um it does get hard as you get older i know that once you get like to be if you choose to have children I know that that makes it really hard and some people feel defeated in that way. Like, hey, I don't have the time. I got to take care of my kids and my family. So I don't have time for a passion. It's like, okay, hold like hold the phone. Like for some people, maybe, but a lot of people still find the time. Yeah. As two people without kids. Yeah. Or marriage. Exactly. And have an opinion on this. We should tell people who have kids, you know, you got time. (laughs) You got to find the time, buddy. But, 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 and I, but you know what though? Like, I agree. Cause there are people like Tony Robbins who have like six kids, you know, and winds up doing it. Like, if you're, (laughs) he's an extreme example. Well, even so though, like, but I'm just saying, like, if you are telling yourself, I don't have time, how are you doing well with that? Like, you can't be giving yourself excuses in that way. I mean, 
think about is the issue the time or is the issue the capacity? I mean, Steve yes. Jobs ran two billion dollar corporations at the same time for a brief right. period in his life. Have you reached your capacity yet? I just challenge people to think that way. So I think that's in the same vein of mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Yes. Talent doesn't exist. Everything is skill. I loved that. Mm, yeah. You know, the whole idea of like you, you call an artist, um, you have such a gift, like they were born yeah. with it and it's like an insult. That was so good. Uh, I really think yeah. we got to make clips of that stuff and send it out yes. and get people hearing it. Um, that'll be very cool. Uh, Agreed. I totally I, agree. I in the same vein, but just a quote I thought was great. Uh, What's something on your list that was different than what we're talking about right now? What's another thing? Communication. What she talked about, she talked about communication and how important it is in her line of work. And she believes that a cornerstone of her success comes from having good communication. And I was like, fuck, yes, it is so true. And then we elaborate on how it applies to more than just business. But I just can't get over how important. I believe if someone dedicated their life to being a master of communication, they they would still have decades beyond that yeah. to continue mastering it. It is that is a 10 million hour mastery kind of project communication. Yeah. And not only is communication so deep in terms of what you can learn, but also so essential for whatever you're doing. Whatever. And I really yeah. wanted to get to the point of this not being just about the art, which is incredible because she's an amazing artist and has all this skill but also she had these other areas because I, what i wanted to do was sort of also hold the mirror up to nature as shakespeare might say towards <laughs> who jj is because mm. we as uh, like you know her as a friend for a yeah. lot longer than i did and as a mm -hmm. first impression was me going and digging in on this nerdpreneur podcast with her i'd never met her before but I have met many people like her before. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that she has a number of traits that I don't think she even acknowledged or say about her, but you would notice about who she is that really helped her create the success in what she does. She yeah. mentions communication skills. Mm -hmm. And I know there are people out there that are going to listen to this and say, well, she just has you know, she's just a different type of person than me. She sounds so driven and motivated and all these other things because, yeah, those are aspects to it. But what I noticed was her standards for herself and for what she does in extended beyond the art. Yeah. Her standards were higher in a lot of other areas, you know, whereas, you know, she didn't uh, accept, for example, someone treating her poorly, you know, uh, just to get a sale or to get a business, right? Um, her standards for uh, her art is very high, but her also her expectations around what she is going to bring to an opportunity. There were many times in the in, in the stories she told where it was yeah. evident that failure for her was not an option. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you picked that up as well, but I feel that like highlighting some of those things about we didn't talk about, but just who JJ, JJ was. Yeah, those are qualities that we can in our own, we can create in ourselves if we're aware of them. I will say that JJ does hold herself to a high level, you know, and that is, I think that, that, that is a, uh, you know, it's tough because as someone who, who also holds himself to a high level, and I don't know if I feel like I always achieve it. I, no, I definitely don't always achieve it, but I can relate in that it's, it's a tough battle. And I think a lot of our listeners are going to feel that way too, that, that we all hold ourselves to a high level. And it can be really demoralizing when we don't achieve it in our eyes, because we are our hardest judges, our hardest critics. But then that ties into one of my favorite things that she said out of it um, is when you asked her about if you had a million followers, what would be the advice that you gave them? And I had to write it down word for word because it was so good. She said, approach passions without expectations. If it's your passion and brings you joy, then the only important thing is that it continues to bring you joy. And that is what I need to hear right now in my life. That is absolutely what I need to hear. And I think a lot of people need to hear it. And that is absolutely going on our soon to be quote wall, soon to be mm -hmm. place of quotes, because that is just in itself enough. Uh 
Well, I agree because there is a balance of achievement, right? Like yeah. When you're a high achiever, which as JJ was, but also as all of you who are listening, if you're even interested in this at any level and you're looking to discern success stories, you're looking to be inspired, you also have that higher standard for yourself that you're trying to live into. Mm-hmm. So it's important for you to not only live into it, but also to, you know, keep that high standard, but also to do it with kindness towards yourself and forgiveness, right? Yes. Because it is a balancing act of achievement, right? And this is something I believe we've talked about on various episodes is that I, th- I think I said this one time is that I used to only move forward when I made myself feel like shit. <laughs> and when right. I was feeling crappy, then I'd be like beating myself up. I'm like, okay, now I'll go for a run. Now mm-hmm. I'll like, oh, I'm, I'm feeling so flabby and fat that I'm actually going to like go and pump some iron and go work out. Now that's what I'm mm-hmm. going to do. Right. So by using the the talk down method to raise my standard um it worked for a while it It got me to a certain place but you know it does cost you yeah it has a cost to it which is that you're just always in that constant conversation with yourself which doesn't make yourself feel good and you are struggling and then you say to yourself even when you get to the highest point that Mm -hmm. you were trying to yeah you say the same thing as like, well, where, why aren't you here? Why aren't you here? Yeah. And then it becomes a constant battle, which is why people get depressed or people who wind up creating success don't have the fulfillment. Yeah. And so it's really important that as we grow, we also learn how to forgive ourselves and treat ourselves well and have those powerful, strong conversations with it, with ourselves in alignment with who we are. So saying, I am a person who's healthy. That's why I work out. It's different than saying I'm a fat piece of shit, so you better work out. Yeah, God, God, even just hearing you say that just made my like made me so uncomfortable just thinking about that. I mean, there is a there there is that voice that we all have to some extent. And I think we we talked a bit about this. Uh, we've talked about this in the past, but, but I think that with the current culture, especially with social media, it makes it really easy for us to compare. And I, I'm not going to go in depth on that because people we hear about this a lot. but. The idea that we go in depth and are the idea that we we see these other people, we compare ourselves in depth, and then we talk poorly about ourselves, and that takes a great toll on us. And I think that one of the great things that okay, two things here. So, first off, one of the great things that she said was celebrate the small victories. You know, that is a great way to like pump yourself up and get excited. But also if you end up ever as a listener and ever end up feeling like, wow, like I want to be where JJ is in my field or whatever field, whatever it is, I want to be like her, but God, she is so disciplined. She has got her shit together. Yeah. JJ has got her shit together, but that's also the level that she's on because that's where she knows that she excels. That's her flow state. That is what she loves. That's where she wants to be. Yes. It's, it's tough on someone like her or someone like Ryan that we spoke to it, but they have recognized where their flow state is, where their happiness lies. What is a good sustainable level? And my sustainable level is not at the level of JJ's like Mm -hmm. she is, she's a couple tiers above me. And, and I think that as long as people can recognize or, you know, play, it takes play to figure out where that manageable, sustainable level is for you. Then fantastic. I mean, I'm still working on it. I I said Mm -hmm. it, I figured it out, but that is not true. I'm still figuring it out. Yeah, man. I, I gotta say that, you know, this episode was so dense with like mentality stuff around how you should be thinking about yourself and how you should be thinking about your, your ability to, to get somewhere. And so much of it is, is, you know, your standards for yourself are your standards. And if you get to change those, well, you get to change those and adjust them based on where wherever you want to be and, and based on what you want to do. And they don't have to be up to where JJ's are. I agree, yeah. you know? Like, realizing that where someone else is, that's not who you should be comparing yourself to. One of the best right. advice I ever got was really to be comparing myself to who I was yesterday, not to where someone else is today. Mm-hmm. Because where someone else is today may not be where they were yesterday. And it took them three years or a whole lifetime of training to be where they are. So if I'm comparing myself to like 
you know, uh, Bono on stage, right? Influencing yeah. millions and millions of people and changing all sorts of lives. I might have a real shitty feeling about what I've achieved in my life, but that's a irrational comparison because I'm not Bono. I don't have the X number of years of experience and his life to have got to where that is. We all have our own journeys. We all have our own uh, ways. So instead, focusing on where you were yesterday, and that's one thing she brought up was I looked back at all of my old posts yeah. to remind myself where I came from mm -hmm. and who it was that I was when I started. And then to look at that and say, wow, look how much farther I have come, focusing on the progress and not the perfection, which is that monster that we have in ourselves to say we have to be perfect. Yeah. And I know you got you got that voice in you, Frank, oh, a little bit God. of a perfectionist. I, oh, I definitely do. I mean, God, there was really so much good stuff that she said that, that touched me on that note. Oh, man. You know what else I really liked about this episode? What? We turned Frank up. <laughs> we turned yeah. Frank up, all right? <laughs> Frank was really low in the first episode in volume, and we went through the whole thing and turned him up. Yeah, all we right. figured it out. <laughs> all right, so just, just so all you, all you were worried that Frank might have come in a little soft on the first episode, he is, all these great insights and everything else is going to be turned up for the rest of the season. You're going to love it. Um, that's the other reason I like it. Yeah, this this episode. Well, you and I also found a much better. We we constantly find a better rhythm, and this is why I'm so happy that we started recording these talking nerdy episodes after we've done several interviews. Is just that you and I have found a rhythm because we did we did not know each other very well when we first started this project. We just both you reached out, and I you know, from my side, it felt like okay, there's a good vibe here, and and then we kind of just started putting a couple feet in front of the. The other feet um, one but, step at a time that's all it is yeah. i think that's another thing that came out of this is just start you're gonna make progress if you just start yes um, and that was yeah. exactly what i wanted to say with, with beautiful tie in there but she talks about for her before she got started she before she actually started pursuing this only like two years ago really she said a year uh you know but like when the gears started turning probably two years ago but it wasn't until she finally started doing it that she did. But she was saying the barrier for her to begin was that she thought she just wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. And that is like, boom, like bomb goes off because that's how we all feel. And we're all like, my perfectionist brain says, oh, that's, you're going to be an imposter. It's not going to be good enough. Look at all these other people that are doing amazing stuff. You're not going to be like them. Well, you're damn right. I'm not going to be like them because they started a long ass time ago. Okay. Well, Am I Probably, like, yeah. Like at least it. 10 years ago. Well, and, and that is the skill side of it, right? It's like that skill is real. It's created over time. And I surrender to the process of it, right? That's a, yeah. something we have to say ourselves is like, okay, I'm not going to be, uh, you know, the Eminem of rap in yeah. my first year. You know what I'm uh -huh. saying? Like yeah, even yeah. in my fifth year, probably yeah. not. You know what I'm probably. saying? Like it, there's a lot of reasons why you have to look at the, like, okay, who are the people you want to be, right? The people you were trying mm -hmm. to be, but then look at that and also talk to yourself about how long is it reasonably going to be to get there? And if you really want to get there, you know, what are the sack, what are you willing to give up to get there? Yeah, you definitely, yeah, it does really help if you identify the sacrifices you're willing to make in advance. Mm -hmm. That's so true. I liked some of the stories about, like, I, here's a small thing that she said, but I thought it was really cool, was just that audacity wins. You know, mm. she didn't exactly say it that way, but her story about her dad and, you know, pursuing yes. the National Geographic uh endlessly till they kind of let him get his shot right yeah and uh some and then you know it was her pointing out that it's also about the audacity the confidence the swagger to say to people highly out of your pay grade you know look at what i do it's pretty dope and mm -hmm. i really think that so many of us get into that imposter syndrome that we're talking about yeah and that when you're new at something, you are an imposter. 
Like Mm -hmm. you're, you're not, you're not as good. You are pretending to be as good as everyone else or to be in this place where you've never been because you are an imposter. As you say, become famous as a, as a musician, that's very common for them to feel that. Right. But I bet it's also very common for anyone stepping into the role of a business or when you start a new job, even if you start a job at Subway, you're an imposter for the first week, probably figuring Mm -hmm. it out. Okay. So, so where, so the audacity to say yeah. to someone out of your pay grade, right, or to give yourself that shot um, is part of progress, part of success, going after it and having that little bit of swagger to say, I'm going to shoot my shot. This goes great for dating, by the way. If you're looking <laughs> to, to date somebody, uh, I think it's important to have that swagger and that audacity. It's one of the first things that'll get you a shot. Yes, I mean, I didn't have so much to say on the dating side of things, but uh, yeah, I agree with it. I agree with it, but that's not what I was going to reply to originally. I mean, I think that very much so whenever anyone starts any kind of enterprise, uh, whatever it might be, that that's taking taking those first steps are scary. I God, what was it? My YouTube project that I did a couple of years ago called Random Roles. That was terrifying. That was really scary for me because I didn't, I mean, the perfectionist voice and the imposter voice, all of those things popped up, but I just was like, you know what? I forget who it was. I think it was my friends, but they pretty much said, you know, you just kind of got to try it. Just, just see what happens. Just don't expect too much. And, uh, and ultimately I, ultimately it didn't really last for very long. I did what I wanted to do, which was like 10 episodes. And then I was like, okay, cool. Now I, I learned a lot. But, I'm did okay you, but did you did you die? Oh, hell no. I learned a lot about YouTube and now my current job uh, has a lot of things involving what I learned through that. Wait, you but you stepped outside your comfort zone, Frank, and you didn't die. Yes, exactly. In fact, I grew. Oh, my gosh. Now your I comfort zone is bigger. Holy my comfort crap. zone is bigger. <laughs> so it's amazing. That is the, that's the most amazing thing. And I just think that that's the lesson, right? Like you got to do the thing you think. Like I tell people all the time who are like oh, about, well, how did you go your Instagram? I, I'm not sure about my content. I don't know if I want to put, I'm like, if your content, I always tell them this, if your content sucks, no one's going to see it. <laughs> so so yeah. just put yeah. it out there. All right. Yeah. Keep that in mind. The algorithm protects you from embarrassing yourself because you're, you're, if you're not putting out anything worthwhile, no one wants to look at it anyways. You're not going to go anywhere. So that's so, exactly what happened with the YouTube channel. I started, I was so <laughs> terrified of it looking really stupid and I would look stupid and nobody saw it aside from the people that I sent it to. Exactly. So if you're going to seem stupid to anybody, it's only going to be those people around you. And if you're doing this to impress them, you need to think about the, why you're doing that to yeah. begin with. So yeah, keep, keep this in mind that, you know, like I, I, I've kind of had to surrender to this with music and it's like, no one's going to believe in you to do music, like except you. All right. Eventually right. someone will come around and like it or whatever, or eventually get to a place where people all of a sudden realize like, whoa, that person's really good. But until you get there, no one will believe in you to do something crazy like that. At whatever age or whatever time, nobody's going to say, you know what, you got, no one's going to come in. I always think that to myself, like, oh, eventually there's going to be some magical super person who comes in and be like, you know, Chris, you're really good at that. Here's your opportunity. Would you like to take it? Like, that's just not how it works. You've got an angel investor that just comes out of nowhere. It's not how it works. Not how it works. You just got to keep going, keep going and push past all of that stuff and do it because you like doing it. Mm-hmm. And because you really want to do it. And then what happens at the end of the day is all of a sudden you're good and maybe even really good at something that people never expected you to be really good at. You have a skill set, whether it be in anything, it could be in sales, it could be in art, it could be in music, it could be in being a lawyer, it could be in being a doctor, it could be anything legitimately. But once you have that skill set, no one could take it away from you because you as a person are more valuable. And now they're like, how did you get so good? You're so lucky. Yeah. And ideally, <laughs> there's that joy that goes along with it. I mean, mm-hmm. if you pursue it and you have the joy, if you it's different. I mean, I think that what she said around that point, just I still love that quote. So I'm going to come back to it real briefly. But with if you are going to school and you're pursuing a professional job, like to be a doctor or a lawyer, like there's going to be so many reasons to why you're doing that. And we won't get into that. But if you are not enjoying that, that's kind of normal. 
kind of school. But if you are enjoying it, then yes, like, yes, you have found the unicorn. You have found the sweet spot. But I think that what she was saying specifically applies really well when you are pursuing a passion that is, you know, not maybe it's not just nerdy stuff. But to be honest, like if you have a passion about something, it is going to be nerdy. Like that's just the definition of nerd. Mm -hmm. You're passionate about something. But the idea that if you are going to pursue something, the joy really should be there. And don't kill the joy by creating a system around it to like make everything as efficient as possible and like get up to the people, you know, get on the level of the people who have been doing it for 10 plus years. Like don't, don't kill your joy that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why it's so important. You love whatever you're doing as a process. If you're going to pursue it as a business or if you're going to pursue it as a passion, it's uh, because, because you won't get anywhere if you won't do it for free generally. Yeah. So, you just finished the appetizer size version of this talking nerdy episode with Chris and Frank. To get access to the unedited meal size version, become a member of our awesome nerdpreneur board. Board members get access to extended versions of our nerdpreneur episodes and access to our monthly AMA advice show where Frank and I answer burning hot questions from the internet and give advice about everything from starting your own nerdy business, tips on dating and relationships, surviving various types of apocalypses, and how to get your unsuspecting friends into Dungeons and Dragons. Go to patreon.com forward slash nerdpreneur and sign up to be a member of the awesome nerdpreneur board. It's only $10 a month or less than a Romulan ale a week to help us turn this nerdy passion project into a full-time nerd success story. Keep it nerdy. It's only $10 a month to join or less than a Romulan ale a week to help us turn this nerdy passion project into a full-time nerdy success story. Thank you for the support, and as always, keep it nerdy.